This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com Sefer Bereshis, Parshas Bereshis. And I want to bring to your attention two episodes in this week's Parsha that very little is known about them. They're very mysterious, very obscure, and perhaps we could shed some light on these two uh, concealed aspects of this week's Parsha. First we're going to talk about the Four Rivers. If you look in your Chumashim and Parag Beis, Pasuk Yud. Parag Beis, Pasuk Yud. Pasuk says, Benahar Yoytse Me'eden. And there was a river that emanated from Gan Eden. And this river, Lahashkois Es Hagan, was watering the garden. Umisham Yiparid, and from there it's separated. Bahayol Arba Roshim. And it became four heads. So there was one river. And this river turned into four rivers. Now, I could care less about how many rivers were in Gan Eden. I don't even know how many rivers are in New York City, let alone Gan Eden, Mikedem. It started off as one river, and it became four rivers. Shem Ho'echad Pishain. The name of the first one was Pishain. Hu Hasoivev is called Eretz HaChavila. It encircled the land of Chavila, Shosham Hazahav. That there was gold there. Shkayach. Very good. I, if there's gold in my wallet, then I care about the gold. If the gold is over there, what, what do I need to know? There was gold over there. And it says, The gold over there was good, as opposed to what? Bad gold. <laughs> gold is good. No, you have fool's gold. That, 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 that's for fools. But for Chachamim, the gold is gold. Shamha Badoilach. There, there were diamonds. Very good. Good for, good, good for that city. Vishem Anor and Hasheni Gichain. The name of the second river was Gichain. Who has Soivev? It's called Eretz Kush. It surrounded a place of people who are black. That, that, that I really need to know. That's really going to help me. Okay. V'shem Anar Ashlishi Chidekel. Hu Ahoylech Kidmas Ashur. It's east of Ashur. So the first river... I don't know what it's east of, what it's west of. The second river, I don't know what it's east of, what it's west of. All of a sudden, the third river, it's east of Ashur. Like, now all of a sudden, that's going to help me. Banhar Avihu Paras. And the fourth river is Nahar Paras. So, you know, these uh, four psukim over here, I need to know them. They're important. Five psukim, why do I need to know any of them? What does it do for me? What, why is it important that there was one river and this river became four rivers? Why is it important that the first two rivers went soivev? The first river went soivev kolar tzachavila. The second river went um, soivev the, the Eretz Kosh. The third river was hoilech. What's the difference? Soivev and hoilech. Why by the first river doesn't it say shem harishain? The second one it doesn't say shnayim. Sh- sh- um, Shalosh It says Sheni Shlishi Ravi So the first one should be Rishayim Not Echad Wrong word mm-hmm. Wrong word Okay So comes the Malbum And the Malbum opens up the world for us The Malbum One of the greatest commentaries on the Chumash The Briskers say That there are only three Achroinim That have a Koyach of a Rishayim Who are they? Obviously they say Reb Chaim Brisker and number two, the Vilna Gain. And number three, the Malbim. There are certain Sukkim in Tanakh. No one was able to explain except for the Malbim. Beis Halevi said the Malbim explained the Baruch HaKodesh. My grandfather's grandfather, my father's 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 father, my great great grandfather was the Rav of the city where the Malbim wrote his Perush on Chumash. And he was a Yedid Nefesh of the Malbim. What? In, li- in the city of Linchitz. Linchitz, which was the city of the Kliyakar. Talking 18, uh, the 19th century. So it says the Malbum, Vinahar Yoitse Me'eden. By the way, my grandpa said at the Tish of the Gerareba in Europe, I guess it was um, Is it different? the Beis Yisrael, at his table, at the Tish, it had the Sefer, Shirei Hanefesh of the Malbim on Shereshim. That was his most prized uh, sefer. So he says like this: says the Malbim, "Kvar beiru hachachamim hadarshem kairos adam The darshanim explain the development of man, 
that how did man proliferate all over the world? Well, when a man wants to travel and expand his horizons, what do they do? They use what as their guide? River. The river. They use the river as the guide. They travel on the, by the river, and the river guides them. I thought it was Google. Mm-hmm. No. Shahayu <laughs> right? Ah. And this image of a river taking you somewhere, this is the image that the Torah depicts for us. And that is, the original plan, says the Mabam for creation, was that man should not eat the eight Hadas, but rather eat the eight Hachayim. Right? So you have two things. You have the Eitz Hadas. See this? This is the Eitz Hadas. Away, away, remove it. That's the Eitz Hadas. Then you have the Eitz Hachayim. This is the Eitz Hachayim. The goal was to eat from the Eitz Hachayim and live forever. However, didn't work out. Didn't work out. The, now the point was they were going to eat from the Eitz Hachayim, live forever, and be oisek in Ion and in Seichel, and in Taira. However, the Rebbe Shem wanted to show that the possibility to veer off was already existing even before Adam Rishon ate from the Yitzhadas. And that is, Gan Eden started with one river. You know what river that is? The straight path. The path of Taira. The path of Gan Eden. The path of Seichel. But that path, if you deviate from that path, it could break out into three paths. And these are the three ways that could take you out of this world. What three things take you out of this world? Hakina, the Hataiva, the Hakavoid, Moitsiyam, Es Ha'adam, and Ha'ilam. You have the straight river, you have the straight path in life, but if you veer off course, then there are three ways to fall out. Hakina, the Hataiva, the Hakavoid. And, I think I have... There are four other rivers. No, there are only three other rivers. I happen to have in my pocket my notes on this, so that's going to help me. The, the Malbim says, like the following, he says, and these three paths, which are crooked, which are distorted, will take you to a different country. And these three different countries have a different tchuna, and a different teva, and a different nature, and a different ambition in life. Now, once Adam Harishan was going to eat from the Eitz Hadas, now all of a sudden man could deviate in three possible courses. And these three rivers, other than Nahar Pras, what's Nahar Pras? Nahar Pras is the river that traditionally, according to Gemara, encircles Eretz Yisrael. All the Nevi'im grew up by Nahar Pras. Avram Avinu, Yechezkel, and, and um, Nahar Pras is the river of Choizim, of Nevi'im, of Chachma. That's the straight path. But Nahar Pras branches off because once you deviate from course, you could branch out into the three branches, Shemehem, Moitzim, and Sa'adam, Min Ha'ilam. Okay. Now let's talk about the three ways that could take a person out of this world. We're about halfway through the first column. There are those, you see where their bold print is? Misham Yi Pared Vahayul Arba Roshim, Makifim Arba Medinois, it encircles the four countries, Shetivam, Utchunasam, Chaluka. That their nature is different. Ki inyane ha'adam ba'ali loisav. That the kan that that the inyanim of a man and his actions achrei achloi me'etz hadas nechlakim liarba are divided into four categories. Yesh haroid fim achrei ha'hoin. Ah, now the first principle is that in life everybody's running. Everybody runs, and the question is, what are you running after? There are no, but there's no one in this world who doesn't run after something. The question is, what are you running at? Some people run after money. Why do they run after money? First of all, they want all their bank accounts to be full. They want their house to be full of nice things. And they think that's the purpose of existence. Money, money, money. Like a famous man once said, the world stands on three things. You know what they are? Money, money, money and money. That's the first shita. There are some people who run after money. Mm-hmm. The second pe- type of person is, no, he's not into money. What's money going to do? I have a million dollars, ten million dollars, a hundred million dollars, fifty million. But what can I do with it? Once I have a thousand dollars, okay, I already... More money is not going to do anything for me. The second kind of person is, Roy Dev Achar Taivas 
Hamizgal Bahidunim. Pleasure. Pleasure. Noshim. Food. Delicacies. That's the second type of redifus in this world. And the third is money. Eh, what are you going to do with money? Pleasure, it just kills you anyway. The third type of person is they run after covet. They're running after honor and authority. These are the three rivers that take you out of this world. Right? The Gemara says, What does the Yitzhahara look like? Like if you wanted to draw a picture of the Yitzhahara, what does he look like? Yitzhahara, the Malachamovis is what? Malay Nayim full of eyes. Full of eyes. Why? Gitar is only what you make him into. Most chatam are with the eyes. He's Malay Nayim. And then when the Yitzhar comes to scare a person and to kill a person, he scares him, the person goes, Ah! He opens up his mouth, and from the tip of the sword of the Malachamavas, some drops come in. Says the Gemara, Shmimenu Mais, Mimenu Masriach. Mimenu Panav Mayrikais. That's the Lashon Gemara. You die from that drop. You, you, you become putrid from that drop. Your face turns green from that drop. What are these three Lashonos? Mimenu Meis. Mimenu Masriach. Mimenu Panav Mayrikais. Says the Hafla. Hakina. The Hataiva. The Hakavid. These are the three things that take you out of this world. That's why, by um, Avram Avinu, when Sari Menu died, it says by Yaakov Avraham Meal. He got it from her face. In other words, he recognized on her face she didn't have her face was not Okay, So these are the three rivers that take you out of this world. Now from the, the, the pursuit of money, what comes from money? From the pursuit of money comes kina. You have more money, he has more money. You're just... Right? Once... When you, had, when you drove your old Oldsmobile, you weren't jealous of anyone. All of a sudden, you got a Acura, but he has a Lexus. And once you got less, he has an Infinity. And he has an Infinity, he has a... As soon as you move up, you have less. The more you have, the more you want. Yes. Why? It's Pashat, right? Rav Chaim Shalom said, Who's more lacking? Someone with 100 or someone with 200? Someone with 200 is more lacking. Because someone with 100, Misha Yesh he wants 200. So he's only lacking 100. Someone with 200... He wants 400, so he's lacking 200. The more you have, the less you have. Once you start moving up, there are more things you need. So that what comes from money? Jealousy. Okay? What comes from, that's not money. What comes from money? Jealousy. Number two, what comes from Hana? You pursue Hana, you pursue Taiva, you're just killing yourself. The more meat you eat, the more worms you have, the more health problems. The more you indulge in taiva, right? in Shulchan Aruch it says, most illnesses, most weaknesses comes from overindulgence in taiva. And what comes from covid, the desire for authority, the desire for power? War. The more power you want, the more fighting, the more war. Okay. There's only one path in life which is Nahar Paras, which is Kadosh Lashem, And that is the path of the pursuit of Chacham. Okay? And each one of these three pursuits is more dominant in different lands. The pursuit for money, pursuit for taiva, and the pursuit for kavit. So now, let us see how this fits into the three rivers. Says the Malbim, um, All of these bad predicaments of man, his gaber b'medina acheres, is stronger in another country. L'fitchunas ha-medina hi. In the place where there's gold, in the place where there are diamonds, in the place where there are rubies, what do you think people are after? Money. Good guess, money. In the place where the desire is burning from the sun and the people are black, what do you think they desire over there? Taiva. They're, they're heated. They're, uh, they are heated by desire. And in the place where they're strong and powerful. What do you think they're after over there? Power. Covet. And that's why there's war. So let's see how this fits into the three rivers. Look in Pasuk Yod Aleph of the Mabam. 
Shem ha echad pishain. Hu ha soivev es kol eretz ha chavila. The first river was Pishon, it encircled the land of Chavila. That is the land that symbolizes Kina, because they want Oisha there, they want money there. There's gold there! Now why do they want gold in that place? So the Pasuk says, Asher Sham HaZahav. Look carefully at the language of the Pasuk. It says in the Pasuk, Kal Eretz HaChavila Asher Sham HaZahav. There there's gold. Let me ask you a question. If let's say everywhere you went in the world, Everyone's garden, they didn't plant their trees and their flowers in dirt. They planted it in gold. What would gold be worth? Nothing. Nothing. Gold has no intrinsic value. It only has value because it's rare. So since there there's gold, meaning there and nowhere else, therefore it's very valuable and that's why they want it over there. But then the Pasuk says further, because there there's gold, they don't even want gold for gold. Now let me ask you a question. What do you do with gold? Nothing. You eat it, you can't eat gold. You, you rub it on yourself, it makes you feel nice. No, it doesn't, look, it doesn't do anything. The only thing it does is people want to shoot pe- other people who have gold. What do you do with gold? Nothing. You could use gold to buy something else. So what do these people want to buy with the gold? That's what the Torah says. There's more than gold in this place. Sham habadoylach, the Evan hashayan. There there's gold. The gold is valuable. They could use the gold to buy what? Diamonds, rubies, jewels. What do you do with that? Ah. And then it says, They also have no intrinsic value. Because if these diamonds would be found everywhere, they also would be completely worthless. Their chashivas is only because of their rarity. Ah. Says the Malbum, Why does it say, Shem Ha Echad Pishain? It should say, Shem Ha Rishain. Says the Malbum, There's a very big difference between Echad and Rishain. Echad means one. Rishon means first. What's the difference between one and first? First is an ordinal number. In other words, first means first is the best in terms of importance. This is not the most important river. Is this river the most important river? Is Pishon the most important river? This is a place where people are just pursuing imagination. It's not Rishon, it's not most in, in, in importance. Which is the most important river? Nahar Pras. But it is number one that we're listing. It's Echad. Okay, that's the first bad place. The second bad place. The Shem Hanar Hasheni Gichain. Where does the Gichain go? Ah. Who has Soyve? They call it Eretz Kush. The Kushites are there. The people heated up by passion and desire and Taiva. That's the second bad place. The third bad place. Is Chidekel. Now the Gemara says something interesting. There are two distinct rivers in Babel. There's Chidekel and Pras. What's the difference between the two? Chidekel makes, makes a lot of noise. Pras is silent. The Gemara says that. The Euphrates River is silent. The Chidekel makes a lot of noise. Why is it making so much noise? Because it represents war. It represents the pursuit of Kavod. And whenever people pursue power, that ends up in Melchama. That's why it says, you know what it borders on? Ashur. Who's in Ashur? All the warriors, all the big kings, all the powerful gover- governors. This is the river of Chideka that makes a lot of noise. Right? Tigris. And the fourth river, Rahanar Arvihu Pras. That is the well known Pras. That's where it all started from. Why doesn't it say the Shame Hanar Haravi? Why does it say the Hanar Haravi? Because this river doesn't have a big shame. Listen carefully. By every other river it says, Shame ha echad. By the next river it says, Hanar Hasheni Gichain. The shame Hanar Hasheni. The shame Hanar The fourth river is not the shame. What's the fourth river? The Hanar Avi Upras. Doesn't have a shame. You know why? It doesn't say where it goes either. It doesn't have a name even. You know why? Because nobody knows about it. There's so few people who go on that path that's very unknown. Like the Gemara says, I see people who want to grow, they're very few. The fourth river, the Derach HaChayim, nobody knows about. Very few people. Has no shame. Has no reputation. Food! Everyone's talking about food. Right? Shabbos over. How is Shabbos? The herring, the kugel, 
Kishka, Tolan, this restaurant, that restaurant. They even have, I can't believe it. I remember when I, when I was a teenager, I was taking driver's ed. The guy in the car and the radio, all he listened to is talk shows about restaurants. So here this guy, what did he do for a living? He would go to different restaurants. And what did he talk about? All he talked about was food all day. So food has a big shame, a big reputation. He didn't talk about driving. <laughs> the guy in the radio? No. Nothing. Then, Taiva. Taiva has a big shame. You can barely walk anywhere. You're bombarded everywhere with, with Taiva. And covered. Also has a very big reputation. But Chachma has no reputation, has no shame. Why does it say where it goes to where it needs to get it? It to get it. Ah! Yeah, but it, it tells you where it starts from. The river comes from Eden. So now I want to tell you a chiddush. I want to just add to what Mom is saying, if we could do such a thing. It's interesting, but it all starts in one place. Why, why doesn't the Torah say there are four rivers? There's Nahar Pras, there's Nahar Chidakal, there's Nahar um, Pishain, and there's Nahar Gichain. No, there aren't four rivers. There's one river, and then the river breaks up into four. The answer is, because all the desires in life, for money, for taiva, for kavod, they're all misdirected, they're all misdirecting the desire of taira. Every human being wants something. They want chachma, they want taira. But sometimes they're not in touch with what they want. So they... They, the Yetzirah causes them to turn and to manipulate and co-ops the river of Chachma and pushes him. What you really want is money. What you really want is covet. What you really want is taiva. No. It's the same old river. It's the Nahar Pras. It's, the, it's not a different river. It's misdirecting the most basic desire of man. So it's not really four different rivers. It's one river. And all the veering is just veering the cor- off course of the original river. Okay. Rabbi Isai... Well, how did no Yetzim Eid that the pros? How do you know that? What? That the one no Yetzim Eid and that's not a pros? That yeah, the Malam says that... That's it. He says, V'hu l'fi kabolas chazal nahar pros. Asher sivev gam. He says, this is our tradition. He says, um, um, about ha- a third of the way through on the first column, we have a tradition. The original river was nahar pros. Okay, now let's talk about the Yetz Hadas. Okay, this is a tree. This is, what, this is what everybody, what's on everyone's mind. Even today, everybody's always interested in the original sin. On everybody's computer, they have a, um, a remez to the apple that Adam Arishan ate. You have a little apple with a bite in it. Even though it wasn't an apple, it was an esroig. We're always thinking about the original sin. So I'll you say three questions about the original sin. Okay, and this is going to really open up our eyes. Hopefully a little different than Adam Arishon's eyes were open to what happened by the original sin. Rabbi said, take a look in Parak Beis, Pasuk Tezayin. Vayikach Hashem alikim as ha'adam vayani chehu began Eden la'avda u'lashamra. Hashem took Adam and he put him in Gan Eden. Vayitzav Hashem alikim and Hashem commanded him al-adam lemar. Mikol eitz hagan ochol toichel. You could eat all the fruits. You could eat apples, pears, cherries, all the fruits you could eat. The day you eat it, you're going to die. Question number one. Oh yeah? The day you eat it, you're going to die? It never happened. Didn't happen. So what does it mean? He lived. And the day you eat it, you'll become mortal. <laughs> Number two, there's a like, grammar problem. There are two mems. There are too many mems in this pasuk. How many mems? It should say, Or, Why? Two mems. Right. 
The two mem, either you want to have the first mem or the second mem, but both are extra. Number three, why does Hashem begin his conversation with, you could eat everything, but you could eat everything. Just say so you can't eat this thing. Well, regarding that question, the, the Malbim points out the minog of Hashem, the way of Hashem in general, is he always tells you what you could do before he tells you what you can't do. Sheishas yamim tavoid, hayayim ashvi tishboiz. Sheishanim tizra asar tzecha, and only then, uvashana ashvi is shavah shavasan. Take a look at the Malbim. Mikolei tzagan achal tavoid is an unbelievable Malbim. Perish yesh lecha rishus lecha. You have permission to eat. Shekei noag Hashem beroi vas haroiz, the minig of Hashem in most places, lahakdim es heter, to put first what is mutter. Sheishas yamim tavoid, the yam hashvi, shabbos. Sheishanim tizras artecha, uvashan hashvi es shabbos shabbos. Ratzaloim er shein as har sashav. The Rebbe Shalom comes and says, I'm not trying to bust your chops over here. Life is very easy. I'm not telling you you can't go to work. You could work six days. You have to work seven days, squeeze it into six days. You could work six years, you only have to rest the seventh year. Like the Gemara in Chulan says, anything the Torah asserted, there's something corresponding to it that's mutter. Ah, oh, now please look, six lines on the bottom. Uma shekasav ume'etz hadas loy soichal mimenu shekefel mem hayichos me'etz mimenu v'huzorus balashon. It's a strange Thing, anyone who learned chumash learns chumash would know. U meitz mi menu. There's an extra mem. Now, if you don't learn chumash, it sounds very good. U meitz adaza. You just keep on blah 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 blah, and you don't pick up on it. But anybody who knows understands that there's an extra mem over here. Like I wrote in my sefer Hatayra of the Hamitzvah. But says the Malbim, Zehayani Sayan la Adam. The test of uh, to Adam Arishon was the extra men. Why? Ki Adam ta milashon zeh. Adam made a mistake because of it. Why? Shabala hayrois. Because really, literally, if you say a mem twice, you know what it means? Only when it's still attached. Only? Shabala hayrois. Sharak mi menu Only from it you shouldn't eat. Ratzalaymer min hamachubar le'ilan. When you say a mem twice, u mi menu, that means you're only now to eat it when it's attached to it, not when it's disattached from it. Avalam tislaish ha'isha mi peiroisav. If the woman would uproot the fruits, the titen loy, and give it to him, mutter loy. Literally, u me'etz hadas loy soicha mi menu means you can't eat from the tree when it's attached to the tree. And says the mama, I'll bring you many proofs. Shekena amashikasav. There's a pasuk in Parshas Tzav. The hikriv mimenu echad mikol carbon. On the pasuk, when someone will bring from it mikol, in the Tars Kahanim we darshan min hamachubar. When it's attached. Vechin bekama makomis. By the way, you should know. You know, many times in the Gemara, the Gemara darshans. I'll tick with this, but this. Or the Gemara makes a gzera shava. Or the Gemara makes a smuchin. Or the Gemara right there. There are Yud Gimel Midah Shatan and Rashis Behem Other Tanam Rabbi Yossi has 32 ways to learn the Torah. Where do they get these ways from? They have an app, ways. Where do they get these ways of learning the Torah from? The Malbim explains in Sefer Vayikra that if you know grammar correctly, he, the Malbim has hundreds of rules that any time Psukim are off in the grammar, that's a signal. Ding, 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 ding. You have to darshan. Because why would the Torah write it this way? It should have wrote it the straight way. The Malbim has hundreds of rules. So it, one of the rules is, it never says two mems. And whenever it says two mems, it's a drasha. What's a drasha? Only min ha So when Adam Arishon heard from Hashem, U mi menu. You know what that means? Don't eat from the tree when the fruit is attached to the tree. When the fruit is not attached to the tree, you can eat it. Oh, so that's why he was allowed to eat it. Adam did no grammar. He was allowed to eat it. The Adam Arisha knew the Malbim cold. So that's why when Hashem came to Adam, he said, Adam! He said, Adam! What are you doing? Why did you eat from it? What did Adam say? 
What's the problem? Adam said, very simple, I'm allowed to eat it. What did he say? Ha'isha nasnali min ha'ech. He took it off the tree. What do you want from my life? I'm allowed to eat it. That's why Adam Arishan really thought he was allowed to eat it. Because Hashem told him, Ume eitz hadas ha'rat lo yisoychal mimenu, which means mechobar. And Adam Arishan said, the woman gave it to me. What do you want from me? She was matarit. It's like Eva Menachai, right? You can I have a question for you. Could you take a bite into a cow? No. But you can, when, it's, when, you, when you cut the neck, you're allowed to eat the cow. Adam Rishon said, we shechted it. We, we, took the, we took it off. I didn't eat Peros Menachai. I took it off. What do you want from me? So you say, so then why was he punished? Because he was an Ibra Chacham. Because nobody told him to make drushes. You make drushes in Tyra. You don't make drushes in the... If somebody tells you, don't eat from it, don't start... Oh, what you really meant was, imagine you tell your kid, don't eat from the cookies. The kid comes and well, actually, I learned today in English grammar that the expression that you used only implied I can't eat from the cookie when the cookies are in the kitchen, you said. So what I did was I took the cookies out of the kitchen. I ate it in my bedroom. What do you do to the kid? Bam. Of course, nowadays you're not allowed to hit. Okay, we're not getting into that. But, but, Adam Marishan was an Ibrahacham. This was the test. He should not have concocted methodologies of darshaning the words of Hashem. And he says, the Malam says, I already used this principle many times in Sefer Malach and Parak Yud Gimel when the Navi in Basel he used his own reasoning to explain the words of the um, the words of, of the Rebbe Hashem. Also, Shimi Ben Gero was Chayv Misa because he uh, came up with Perushim in the Shvua. Ein lanu lahakav b'mitzvah Hashem api perush in afash misvara seino. Svaras are a dime a dozen. Oh, I have this svara. Why it's mutter? I have that svara. It's mutter. No, no. What should shal kapanim hayalei lehistapik? You know what other mission should have said? You know what? I'm not sure. And suffik doi raisa lechumra. You have a good. You have a drasha to make. Why you could take it off the tree? But you can't be so sure. He should have been Masopik and been Machmer. And this was the test. If he would be able to grab hold of the reins, at the time the Yitzhahara comes to persuade him, the Yitzhahara comes to bring him a heter, but Hashem said the day you're going to eat it, you're going to die. Never said that. Hashem didn't say, "Be'ay machach imenu mois." He said, "Mois Thomas, you're going to die many deaths." What are the many deaths? The many deaths are now you're veering off the straight course. Now you're not on the hard pros anymore. Now you took your ship on the Chidakel, on the the other river, on the uh, Pishoin, on the Gichoin. You know, you're going to die many deaths. You know what they are? What do the Eitz Hadas do? The Eitz Hadas... Let me ask you a question. Here, you're driving your car. You're enjoying it. It's getting you from place to place. It's fuel efficient. All of a sudden, you turn around and you see someone else's car. No, so he has a better car. Why does it bother you? Bothers you because the Yitzhahara conjures up an image in your mind that if you would have this car, you would be happier. Or you're happy with your lot in life until you see his house, or his family, or his... So what? What is his... You, you were just happy a second ago. No. The Yitzhahara now conjures up images in your, ha- in your mind that if you would have this, or if you would have better food, or if you would have more taiva, you would be happier. Or if you would have more kava, you would be happier. These are all pictures in the mind. It's a button in the head which the Yitzhahar presses. He presses the covered by Ah, oh, you got Ravi. You'd feel much better if you got Shlish. Ah, oh, this guy has this. You'd feel much better. It's a button in your head. The Yitzhahar pushes the button. But that all comes from the Yitzhadas. You know why you, what it means you're going to die? Mois Tomos. Yeah. It's a slow death. Many deaths. Every time you see somebody with more money, you die a little more. Every Because you have kina Or a kavat soma is kina. The kinna causes the bones to rot. Every time you see better food, you die a little bit more. Every time you see 
a little more covered, you die a little more. It's daily, it's hourly, it's every minute. It's not a one-time death. You know when it starts? The moment you're born. When does death begin? The moment you're born. It's every moment of life. And, and says the Malva more than that. And now you're being pulled away from the Nahar Pras, Chachma. And when you go away from Taira, and you go and you leave Taira, and you go out to pursue other wants, so Rishayim, Bechayehem, Nikraim, Mesim. These are all different types of deaths. There are many types of deaths. It's a slow, torturous way to go. Adam Rishay, I never told you when you eat the tree you're going to drop dead. No, it's, now it's going to be painful. It's going to be slow, slow, slow. Every moment of life, every time you're bombarded with taiva and you have to, and you have this pull within you, I want the taiva, but I can't, but I shouldn't, but it's a slow way to go. Says the album. Look at, look at these words. On that day, you're liable to death. Because on that day, all of these bad images will be conjured up in your mind. All the rivers now. They're all bothering you. And from now on, there's a war between the soul and the body. The soul wants one thing, and the body wants something else. And now the body is this, is this confluence of desire for spirituality and desire for physicality. And the body cannot, the soul cannot free itself. The soul can never free itself of these things that pull it down. The soul cannot free itself until when? Till the day of death. And the day of death is very hard for the soul. Because since the soul was so intertwined, the Gemara says like this, for a big tzaddik, what's death? Death is like pulling a hair from a cup of milk. Very easy. Nothing's holding it down. A big tzaddik has no, has no attachments to kina. To t- has no attachments to money, has no attachments to pleasure, has no attachments to covet. So the soul is removed from the milk, it's very easy. But for the Russia, for the Russia, it's like pulling wool out of thorns. The Russia is so attached to this world, it's very hard to remove the neshama. And that's the daily grind. That's a daily grind. He says, V'chein gam l'haguf Every moment of life, there's a fire in our bones. And it causes our breakdown. What causes death? More jealousy, more jealousy. It causes the breakdown of the body. It causes the breakdown of the composition of the body. Taiva desires meat, desires food. This is what it means. Misois harbe. Like it says, and then says the Malbum, but besides that, there was an instant death. And how is that? That until Adam ate from the Yitzhadas, what was life? Taira and Chachma. As soon as he ate from the Yitzhadas, now his ship is not sailing on the Harpas anymore. Now the ship is headed to doom. Once you're off course, that's death. Doesn't mean a person is buried. It means like we say Rishon Bechayeim Nikra Mesim. It means compared to the life Adam Rishon had, as soon as he ate from the Eitz Hadas, that is death. And our job is turn back the ship, remove it from the rivers that deviate from the Harpras back onto the river that heads to Gan Eden, to the Eitz Hachayim, wishing everybody Shabbos Amnucha. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.